In this video, I'm going to be talking about a merry-go-round and car problem where each of them are going around in a circle and we're going to find the period, the amount of time it takes to complete that circle. Now, I'm actually only really going to mathematically go through one of these problems because they're almost exactly the same thing and I'll explain why in a minute here. So the first thing you do is start off with your force diagram and we have an FG force of gravity straight down, the normal force perpendicular to the surface holding the person up. And then as their body is trying to slide outward, we have the force of static friction opposing their slide pointing towards the center of the circle. Now, the reason why these problems are basically exactly the same thing is because this diagram has the force of gravity down, the normal force up from the earth, and then if the car is going into the page and then to the left, here's the center of your circle. And then we have the force of static friction pointing to the center of your circle in the centripetal direction. So it's basically the same scenario, just different objects. So the way that you would solve them would be basically the same thing, but just with different number values. So I'm going to work out this one with the merry-go-round. We know the coefficient of static friction is 0.4. The radius of the merry-go-round is 3 meters. The person is 20 kilograms and we're looking for the period, as I mentioned, that's the amount of time it takes to complete that circle. Okay, so this is the big um, component in the problem, which is the force of static friction is your centripetal force. It is your main net force that's causing the person to travel around in a circle. So we know that the force of static friction is your net force and your net force is m times a but when something is traveling in a circle the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r so it's the force of static friction equals mv squared over r in the y direction we have the normal force and the force of gravity so we know that fn minus fg equals zero so basically fn equals fg because there is no acceleration or motion in the vertical direction so we know that it equals zero therefore if you add fg to both sides then fn equals M fg all right so now if we're solving for the period what we're going to do is break down the problem a little bit more and if you don't know how to solve one of these problems what you want to do is solve for as many values as you can write out as much information as you can and it will slowly um, direct you into the or excuse me towards the right direction Okay, so we know that the person has a mass of 20 kilograms, so force of gravity is mass times 9.8. So we know that the force, the normal force, is equal to 196 newtons. Now that will typically be pretty significant because the force of friction is mu times normal force so that is mu times normal force equals mv squared over r now i know that if i'm going to solve for t then i'm going to have to do a substitution and i know that the velocity equals 2 pi r over t which is basically a distance over time calculation because 2 pi r is going to be the circumference of the circle divided by the time um, the capital T, the time it takes to complete that circle. So let's go ahead and plug in some values. We know that mu is 0 0.4, normal force is 196, mass is 20, and then we're going to do a substitution and we're going to take this V and then substitute in the 2 pi r over T. But everything is squared, so I'm going to square everything for the 2 pi r over T. So two squared is four, we have pi squared, and then we have r squared. And then since it's divided by t, the t squared is on the bottom. And then we still have this original r that's in the mv squared over r. So we also have another r on the bottom. So what we can go ahead and do is cancel out one of the r's. 
So what we're going to do is a little bit of cross multiplication. We're going to cross multiply these two, and then we're going to get t squared equals 20 times 4 times pi squared divided by 0.4 times 196, and that equals 30.21. Finish off by square rooting both sides, and then your answer comes out to 5.5 seconds as our final answer. So depending on what you're asked for, um, the problem might look a little bit different, but the main components are that you have the FG and normal force that for the person or the car are going to be equal to one another. And that FN is going to be significant in putting it over here for your force of static friction formula. So once you have the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, that's always going to equal mv squared over r in one of these scenarios because it is your net force and your centripetal force. If need be, you're going to take your substitution of v equals 2 pi r over t as we did and then plug it into here. If you want to solve for one of the smaller components, you may not have to. Do a little bit of algebra and then go ahead and solve for that value that you're looking for, which happened to be the capital T, the period which was 5.5 seconds for this problem. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve any type of merry-go-round or car turning problem. Thank you for watching and listening.